Okay, so I hand over to you to please enlighten on us on this issue and uh, the DRT Bar Association, mostly the participants are there. They will also be enlightened by your uh, this seminar today. Over to Mr. Vikas for further. Uh, so, Justice Kanan, it has always been a pleasure hearing you not only in the court while you were penning down the judgments and dictating the judgments and meeting you in the court on a different platform outside the court and now on these virtual platforms. Uh, it's always a pleasure and to hold you for a long, it will be an injustice because the participants are just willing to hear upon you. Thank you, sir. Lovely to be back with you all, uh, dear Mr. Vikas, uh, Mr. I.P. Singh, and to all of you there. I'm so excited to be associated in some way or the other with Chandigarh Bar. You have been very special to me. And because it uh, talks to me about the COVID times, when uh, there are truly stressful times for industry. Person that borrows money expects the business to be run, expects uh, profits to be made, repayments to be done. That is the way the whole economy goes. Not everyone that wants money has it and therefore he has to secure from somewhere else and then put it. Not everyone who has money knows how to make it multiply. So therefore banking uh, and financial institutions bridge the kind of gap between persons who do not have the resources but who are resourceful enough to start industries, how to keep it going. So from the point of view of uh, macroeconomics, from how great plannings are made and executed, we need to understand this branch of law uh, well. I had a <laughs> talk and thinking of my own uh, association as a lawyer, did not understand the, the subject too well at one time for persons who had the initiation to understanding security, enforcement of security under the Transfer of Property Act. The Securitization Act, the Sarfasi as we say, brought giant changes, the massive changes. So the understanding had to be completely different. And uh, if anyone was sent to the debtor Kori tribunal from my office as a junior, probably I never did anything more than merely saying, take some more time. We don't seem to have defense. And let us try to take some time before the DRT. And then ultimately uh, the case will be uh, ordered. We'll take some defense, we'll deny everything because banks have all documents. And then you deny the uh, loan. You deny that you, signed with the knowledge of what it contained. So never really knew what was possible for a lawyer to do beyond taking time in courts. And uh, changes kept happening because when DRTs initially to start with, they were guided only by the lawyers who was practicing normal courts. And therefore they knew that taking time, taking an adjournment is not a big deal. It always happens if you're okay, there's where and it is possible for you to say. And uh, it didn't happen the way the parliament envisaged that should uh, work. So therefore, there had been substantial changes. Two principal reasons how it uh, came to be made was uh, there were uh, the banking sector was not doing too well. The industry uh, had several requirements that they had to go to private money lend lenders who charge usury rates of interest. And uh, if there was security and there was an enforcement of security, if you know how things were happening, how, how much uh, time it took in courts, uh, it became very difficult for a person who would give credit to recover if there is ever a default. So uh, this law came through some recommendations from committees. So I'll put through, uh, put through some slides. And we are going to be talking essentially about enforcement of securities. The act contains several things. And it's uh, just about 50, less than 50 sections, but then the each section is uh, quite complex. So therefore, the subject itself is not at all times uh, 
uh, yeah, purely legal subject. It, it, it makes so much of, it employs so much of jargon from the banking sector, from the finance sector, from the capital markets. So we need to be introduced to certain concepts. And I'll uh, right now go to some slides and share some screen with you. And I'm sure like we at all times did, we'll have adequate time to questions and answers. Uh, host is disabled from participant from screen sharing. Uh, you can't disable, um, see, make it possible for, because for me to share the screen. It says uh, you have disabled the participant from screen sharing. Make it possible. Can I share the screen? Because make possible screen sharing. Been yes, yes, sir. It's been allowed. Yes, sir. It's been allowed. Yeah. So the yes, sir. Uh, the enforcement of the security interest and making of banking and financial assets matter is how I envisioned the whole program for us today. And uh, I'll give you briefly an outline about how I'll go. I'll we'll run through quickly on the history of legislation, the committee reports which made it possible. Uh, what was the previous inadequacy in uh, the system of realization of uh, security interest or the enforcement of these securities. How do we therefore think of empowering the sector? This is uh, one part. So I'm thinking of uh, three segments. Second one will be the taking of possession of assets, which is the most crucial thing, which is uh, when we see the orders of DRT put to place or the DRT oversees what is happening and uh, recovery officers bring it there later when the property is going to be prime for putting up a sale. How is it all done? And uh, the most important thing, uh, I'll take it as a small uh, sub, uh, subtopic for you, because at the time when possession is sought to be delivered, resistance to possession comes through persons who are not at all times seen at the time when any lending was made. So therefore, uh, the persons who could have an obstruction, or if there is an obstruction under some color of law, it happens through tenancy rights and therefore nature of tenancy, which will be relevant. And we are talking about asset reconstruction, the securitization and asset reconstruction. These are some small technical expressions which I'll explain um, before we go into the enforcement of security, because we need to understand that this contains, this law contains something different from what we are acquainted with under the Transfer Property Act. For persons who are probably students of law, the young lawyers there, uh, must know that they have a role to play more than merely arriving in the DRT and taking time, or merely getting these uh, documents were uh, executed by them. There is something else which they can do, and therefore they should know what some of the concepts which are underlining in this act. And uh, I would think as a last, uh, the, the performance out, what is the role of the DRT? What is the extent of adjudication which is possible? Is it merely an institution which, okay, see, the thing is an order? Yes, an order is passed. Uh, take, uh, take an award, enforce it, take delivery, possession of property, disperses the person who has availed of the loan who is not able to pay. And how do we as lawyers do some work beyond taking time in court? While taking time and relieving the for a person who is unable to pay is fine. But then that, is, that cannot be a principal activity at all. And uh, I have always mentioned for uh, dispute resolution in the way that mediation takes place as to how uh, Vikas introduces me already. So therefore, I will also have something to do about, something to say about that in this scheme uh, of very uh, little used or seldom used to provision, which we need to be really seeing. And that's how, uh, this may not necessarily follow in the same line, but this is how I plan to take you. And um, in, in, to, to know that 
the legislation it all probably started sometime in the year uh, 19 uh, it was 1970s uh, and 80s in usa where uh, house mortgages were a popular uh, theme and uh, many persons uh, housing became a major activity in usa and uh, it became possible only by uh, financial institutions lending money on the security of property of the assets or what they will give in order that a construction is made the construction will also be a part of the security which is offered so of a security which is going to be at an initial stage in an incomplete one later to grow all that, that was how it was conceived later the wall street to, took it uh, in some way it cannot be really these uh, securities there should be other type of assets as well assets the financial assets of what uh, the wall street was uh, very family with and uh, they used these uh, financial assets uh, for securitization so therefore uh, these uh, this is how it started and we had known uh, issues of ot or uh, mortgages usability mortgages we had known at all times in punjab i have seen and that it did not require any document some entries there in the revenue records would be sufficient to put a person in possession of what was very significantly different in punjab um, why the transfer property act itself was not uh, extended except for a few provisions relating to sale and other things and we were all aware of uh, creating some security for a person who lent the money and enforcement of securities but this uh, this act provided the transfer property act provided for enforcement through a civil procedure court civil procedure court uh, took that as a very important piece uh, and therefore it made a separate provision in order 34 and order 34 among if you will uh, practitioners of law will know that if property is brought to sale if the hypotheca is taken to sale for non payment of money and the property is purchased the purchaser was never assured of a property being taken delivery of all that was uh, it, the if the mortgage are comes at the last minute after a sale takes place and uh, there is an application for reopening the case restoring the case preferring an appeal and then even after the sale it became possible so long as final after even after the passing of the final uh, so long as but, period it was not concluded before the delivery was uh, taken any time before delivery it was possible for the for a uh, mortgage or to make the payment and then see that the mortgage is redeemed so it was uh, the terms of law is such that a security interest was at all times used for purposes which was not it uh, was not correct which did not do full justice to a creditor it did not also do full justice to a person who was prepared to stake his claim purchase the property put the funds in to the financial institution for the financial institution to take and sir, could you come close sorry sir could you come closer to the mic because there is some distortion of the voice the voice is cracking okay okay if there is anything please tell me now so uh, and was, uh, kindly do not strip uh, kindly do not scribble on the screen otherwise we will have to remove that person who is doing that yeah some so there Thank are Yeah. And so uh, this is how it started, and therefore in the Transfer Property Act provisions were not sufficient. Uh, Order Thirty-Four Rule Five itself was uh, a kind of a disincentive for quick realizations, and the State Financial Corporation Act brought for the first time something more. And the financial institutions uh, had the power to take possession of the assets and uh, take take over management. All that was possible through Twenty-Nine, Thirty, Thirty-One, and uh, this was for a very small area of activity by financial institutions which are the state financial corporations so this did not include every everything and uh, therefore uh, a, the government of india at the time had set up a committee narasimhan committee it was called in, uh, that gave place to uh, very important role for rbi how will the central bank control various uh, constituents various uh, constituents it also talked about Uh, some method of uh, understanding a non performing asset you know if uh, somebody borrows money from the bank he doesn't make the payment it is shown in the books of accounts of the banker as 
an asset. It is, he is entitled, the banker is entitled to realize it. And it's an asset. And it's more than three years, four years. It's because there is 12 year period where there is an enforcement of security. And then it is there for a long time. And it, uh, it created uh, a false picture. Uh, it would seem as though the bank has enormous assets. And uh, in, the, uh, in the way the balance sheet is drawn, it would seem like the bank is uh, rosy in its uh, functioning. It would not be at all. For it may be shouldering a heavy burden of a lot of uh, debts from persons who are not servicing the loans. And it is merely creating a false picture to the public and to even the financial institutions. So this non-performance as to how it should be treated and what is the how do we characterize some assets as non-performing was also what the Nasim committee talked about. And it also recommended the entry of foreign banks. Uh, foreign banks came in a very big way and brought with them also their investors, brought uh, some kind of incentives. So therefore, it was to revamp a banking sector in a very big way and ensure also recoveries uh, in some ways which will be different. And it contemplated setting up a separate institution for that. And that was what therefore gave place to the DRT, the enactment, a separate enactment which came for setting up establishment like a debt recovery tribunal, an exclusive tribunal came through the Narsim Committee recommendations. And it didn't seem all sufficient because like I said, the DRTs as they started working initially, they were just extended courts. They were uh, happening the same way that institutions uh, um, allowed for the usual uh, manner of performance in courts. It did not uh, improve the quality of adjudication or recoveries. So therefore, uh, there was Andhya Arjuna, a, a very popular uh, lawyer, person uh, of uh, the Supreme Court, a senior counsel of the Supreme Court from Mumbai. He had uh, an important role to play during the uh, Keshwan and the Bharti case uh, with uh, assistance given by him and uh, Harish Salve to uh, the great counsel, Nani Palkiwala. And uh, he had, uh, there had been a committee with him with about 12, 13 persons. <laughs> And he contemplated and he, the committee made a recommendation for a separate law for the securitization which gave place to the Sarfasi Act. And it also <laughs> made important recommendations for certain changes in the uh, way the DRT functioned. So therefore, it gave place again to some important amendments to the law that established the DRT. And it uh, advocated for the abolition of Sika, the Sikh industries. Uh, this is again an, uh, a tribunal which merely allowed for a company it goes and there is a provision contained there which will stall, stay proceedings. And then there is a proceeding before uh, the Sika, then you stay all the proceeding before any other court. So simultaneous proceedings were there before courts as well as before Sika. Nothing was happening. So he also said, now abolish, let us abolish it. And then this also brought, he brought, gave an amendment to, to Section 28 of the Contract Act. So these were the various changes which Andhya Arjuna Committee talked about. And uh, the, what gave, what it gave, uh, gave place the Sarfazi of what we are now concerned about uh, was um, the certain concepts. It, the, what is the security interest of what it creates? Uh, how is the security to be enforced? What does the securitization do? Uh, and then what with the security, what must happen in order that you approach the DR, uh, uh, approach the DRT for enforcement of security, or when you can take possession of the assets under Section 14, when you can issue notice under Section 13. So all these uh, would require the next thing must be the NPA. So the first condition in order that you have an enforcement of security will be there must be a security interest. It should have become a non-performing asset. If it is still performance, if the loans are being repaid, there is no question of anyone coming suddenly foreclosing things and then coming to the uh, tribunal or uh, to the DRT or to issue notice for possession. And now, and after that, the third one, which this is for enforcement of security, which is essential, is take possession and bring the property to sale. So this is uh, this are these are the three stages uh, which we will see now about the enforcement of security. And the other thing will be this an asset reconstruction because whenever we're talking about uh, uh, 
Sarfasi Act, there is a, a body, a, a, an institution which can take assets, which can take all the stressed assets. This is uh, something like, you know, uh, you have um, uh, some automobile, uh, all old automobile uh, uh, shops where um, the old cars, dumb cars, you, you take it there. Why should anyone be interested in scrap? Does anyone ask? Uh, it doesn't surprise us because there is always a market for recycling it. There is always a market for somebody who is interest, who is interested in money, who is not able to secure the bank is interested in securing uh, secure, uh, securing its money back. Is not getting it. There is a person who is not paying. It's a non-performing asset. There is a reconstruction company who says, "No, don't worry. I'll take over. I'll take it at a discount. You expect ten crores of money? All right. I'll pay you two crores. You are good to with two crores now. Whatever I am able to secure, I'll take care." So therefore, this reconstruct uh, the reconstruction companies truly are the companies which lend oxygen to the financial market wherever a fund becomes stressed. So therefore, this is how it goes. Uh, and in the manner of seeing that, uh, we'll just see some of the concepts. I thought uh, the definition itself in securitization is a kind of a complex definition, uh, but just go through with me. Uh, this is something which we must know. If you have a section 2Z, if you'll read securitization, if you've understood, you're a great job. Uh, but then it is not always very easily understandable. Uh, so therefore, I'll tell you, give you some examples. Uh, it's, a, it's a kind of a risk management tool. Is, that's what they say of a securitization. This is uh, associated with the default of individual assets. And uh, the banks and financial institutions uh, uh, adopt this tool to minimize their exposure to risk. Just to illustrate to you, a uh, bank lends money to a person who purchases a car. Banks uh, lend money to a person who runs an uh, industry. Banks lend money to a person who is uh, building a house. Now, these are uh, monies lent with some securities taken. Let us say for uh, house properties offered a security or uh, the land is offered a security. There are sec securities which are offered to them. They have an exposure to risk of one person could be a genuine person who is unable to pay due to some difficulty in the market, his business failed. Another person's lost his job. Another person thought he will be a defaulter. The banks have all the resources. What am I doing? If I'm not paying my money back, what will happen? So therefore, uh, there are various levels of risk involved in any lending, isn't it? It's an obvious thing all of us understand. Now, this risk is now, of an exposure of what I have, I make it available to somebody else who is prepared to pick that. And then uh, that is done through issue of bonds. Then I say now for you, you have, you may have probably heard about hybrid uh, varieties, or it could be just on capital bonds for something for, in, uh, for infrastructure building. So therefore, depending on the type of lending which I've done to several types of lend, uh, loans which I've issued, I may secure all these assets of what I have in my hands of a right of enforcement of these uh, securities. I will give, give it away to persons who are prepared to pick it from me and uh, invest in those kind of securities. They will invest in those securities in undivided shares. We are acquainted uh, students of law understand undivided shares, the way the Mithakshara op uh, operates. You, it, it is a fluctuating thing. It may keep happening. It's an undivided interest, which somebody, the asset restructure, the reconstruction company will pick from you. So therefore you have your um, various types of, there, there are mortgage-backed securities where securities are essentially driven through mortgages, which all of us understand. Or it could be on auto loans, uh, credit cards, for instance, credit card, when a bank um, extends a credit to you and you are liable to pay the money to the bank, the money, the money which it has lent, it is going to recover it from you with interest. That is an asset which the bank owns. So therefore, these are various types of assets which I create, which are secure. Security interest, it could be uh, through immovable properties, through other financial uh, securities as well. All these are various uh, things which can keep happening. 
Now, in that, we'll again know uh, that there is a liquid asset and illiquid asset. Normally, we know liquid and solid. When we're talking about something liquid, uh, then uh, something is a solid person. We don't talk about solid assets. A liquid asset could be a solid asset. Liquid asset is an asset which is immediately uh, capable of being converted to cash money. Fixed deposit, for instance, it's a liquid asset. And uh, it's a short term, within a short term maturity, if it has, it's possible to convert it to ma money immediately. The illiquid, the, that which is not immediately possible of conversion, it could be a real estate security, it could be uh, shares also, but then uh, they become uh, truly liquid in these days. Uh, illiquid is that which is not immediately converted in terms of money. We'll take it like that. This is how you normally see. Um, in, in, out of this, uh, we'll also see another concept, the institution through which we'll uh, see is a reconstruction of financial assets. The asset reconstruction means, I've now brought it there uh, as uh, uh, important definition, I thought asset reconstruction means acquisition of, uh, let's just put that, I think it's, oh, oh, oh this gone away. Uh, the asset reconstruction is a kind of a financial institution which makes it buys all these kind of securities it invests the money there and then takes it at discount that's what happens now the concepts i said which i will introduce you to is securitization explain to you as to how it operates where it can be even in this one more illustration of what i can give perhaps is uh, supposing uh, i i undertake to build a bridge there is a contractor and in a contract with the government they say now you build a bridge you put your money and then you can uh, collect funds. You, you can uh, collect, put a, install a toll and then collect the money. Or it is uh, handed over through the government to through uh, some person who is prepared to take it as a concessioner. And he collects the money on behalf of this person, pays the money who has built. So therefore you have, he is now going to recover. Supposing he has invested in about 100 crores in an infrastructure building for the government that 100 crores he has to realize it through tolls, let's say like that. And it knows it's going to take a long time, it's going to take about 20 years. So therefore, I, I don't have the time, uh, I want money immediately for the money which I invested. That is, it's another person uh, who is prepared to buy that. He's prepared to take it from you and say, no, I'll stagger it. I, I can recover it over a period of time because in this portfolio, he has several levels of risk which is exposed to himself. He knows this this toll uh, uh, booth can generate uh, say uh, every month somewhere close to about 50 lakhs let us say on a highway so therefore he is prepared to see that this money can come in the this time in, in a span of 20 years time that's fine for him for he is putting his money in this expecting it to secure to him about 200 crores so therefore that is his margin over a period of time so therefore that kind of a security where you share the risk with another person who is prepared to invest, he is prepared to take that. That is the way the securitization operates. And I also told you about the liquid assets and the illiquid assets, of how they have to do, the, the, un, their understanding is through how it is capable of being converted to money. Debt securities uh, or uh, those securities with, which are open debts, which are created and if they are offered a security, they are financial securities. Definition of debt, I don't think is necessary. We, we have it there. The non-performing asset also, I told you about non-performing assets. It's a, it's a standard asset, which is uh, when we are talking about standard assets, we are talking about uh, an asset where there is fits and starts a repayment takes place. It's not regular. That's a standard uh, asset. A substandard asset, when we say a non-performing asset, which where the repayment is not exceeding 12 months, it's less than 12 months, it's a substandard asset. And then it is a doubtful asset where the repayments have not taken place for more than 12 months. Then you call it as a doubtful asset. Then you also call the, make reference to loss assets. Uh, loss assets are assets where the repayments have not happened for more than three years. And, um, uh, that is 30, more than 36 months. And uh, there, there are willful default where loss assets could take place due to various reasons. There could be a willful default, uh, typically of uh, what we hear from Kingfisher. 
of um, where you found they were the Malay was not paying back the money, and uh, it had uh, secured its loan through the uh, through its own assets and things. But then you, the payments had been grossly irregular, and uh, uh, you realize that he had the funds, but he had a manner of stashing away in places where the banks uh, could not reach. And therefore, it was possible for for the person to be enjoying the benefits of all the loans they had taken, they had secured, he could secure, but still he was not paying. It was willfully, he thought, now let me not pay, what could happen, let us see. So that was an attitude, that was willful default. Therefore, you will find that the willful default happens in situations, and therefore the financial institutions or the government which extends uh, some kind of packages, don't allow this, uh, any benefit of, uh, yeah, uh, tackling a repayment to a lesser sum to persons who are willful defaulters. Uh, it could take place on account of industrial crisis. Typical situation of what you see during COVID, uh, a payment may not be possible. The income is not coming. The workers are not making, uh, they are not attending uh, factories uh, and the factories have shut down. It could create serious problems. NPA could uh, be on account of uh, a, a recessionary trends in the market a slow growth. And in some areas, for us in India, uh, the metal, uh, the real metals, you know, like uh, silver, um, copper, um, then um, uh, steel, all these, they had been uh, seriously, uh, the growth had stunted in a very big way because of several reasons. You know, one of the reasons was also on um, issues of uh, environment, whether we need to have this kind of mining industries became a very serious doubt that there had been a lot of delays in sanctioning granting licenses and there was a lockdown and there were uh, problems like what happened in Sterlite, uh, which the fact where the factory remains closed for various reasons. So that is one. Or where the bank then uh, are very lenient in their norms. Uh, they flout the norms of what the Reserve Bank of India sets down, of what we probably know through Nirav Modi situation, where and today, a couple of days back, the information is the case is coming up there, and he has a similar defense like what Malaya has to say, that Indian prisons are not good, as though the prisons have to be palaces. Uh, and uh, that is how we, they saw. Uh, and uh, this is again... Uh, uh, possible on account of uh, the lenient lending norms. Uh, there could be uh, over rating sometimes. For instance, uh, I, I'm told among uh, other places, uh, Amtec uh, uh, batteries, uh, they, they were rated very high. Uh, they thought it was a, a great uh, company, but it became sick. It, they didn't repay. They fell into serious uh, problems. So therefore, you have several reasons why uh, asset become non-performing asset. So that's the way we understand because that is a condition precedent for enforcement of security that debt has become a non-performing asset, NPA. I mean, just need to know. And in, in terms of how serious the problem in India is, our non-performing assets in terms of the total in 2017, uh, total was 9.6% of all the assets. Uh, the non-performing assets was as high as 9.6% uh, in India in 2017. I think in 2018, it went even higher. It's a 10.4%. Uh, and uh, China, for instance, uh, which is a larger economy where uh, they, they have large financial institutions which uh, lend big time monies, uh, they have the, uh, the NPAs was probably, is probably the lowest it's about 1% or something. It's just around 1%. Uh, and uh, India records uh, the highest, the second uh, in the world. And the first is Italy, that you can always, uh, it's not all, our way, uh, when I was in Punjab, we used to joke, if uh, anything is bad for us, we'll compare ourselves uh, with Pakistan and feel happy. So it is not like that. Uh, it's, uh, Italy is bad. Uh, it's worse than us. They have 14%. And uh, of the banks, um, the, the, the bank which shoulders the maximum problem of NPS is IDBI. And IOB, IDBI has somewhere close to about 24.1% of all the assets of what it has lent are NPA. IOB is also fairly high, is 
Kotak Mahindra and uh, HDFC, they have the lowest and they have somewhere close to as low as 2% smart banking debt. And uh, uh, SBI also has a lot of stress assets. They, they have come, they are above the, the overall average of 9.6%. They are about 10%. So uh, I told you this uh, NPAs can uh, um, result in account of several situations. Several situations could uh, be due to external factors also, such as what we are seeing. Um, I, I'm giving to you this only in order for you to know that uh, NPAs can result not necessarily only by a willful default. It can happen due to so, so many other reasons as well. And that is uh, essential for us to know. And uh, that this, um, I will just see now, the, apart from securitization, now I see that uh, just a minute. Uh, you, uh, want the slide? No, the slide is uh, just. I, I, no, sir, I, I haven't done it because once we are showing on the live on the uh, no. live on the Facebook, uh, then you are not visible, and the slide also doesn't become visible. That is why I removed the slide. As and when you want, we will uh, allow no, that. Uh, I want the slide now. Yeah, now and then. See, when I'm not making the slide, probably you can put the slide back. Right, sir. Right, sir. Because on the Facebook, it's only showing the slide. Yeah. Yes, sir. Now, see, um, apart from this, the, I said that something we need to know is the reconstruction company, which is not uh, the face before us. In many situations, we see the bank there. The reconstruction companies play a very important role. Like I said, there are two sections which you need to know where you see under the act. In Sarfasi, you see, because that is how you'll find the Sarfasi Act itself begins with section three, four, five, the registration of reconstruction companies. That is where the emphasis is given, not the financial institution of a, or a bank. Acquisition of a, a rights of interest in financial assets, section five talks about it. There is a provision for exemption of stamp duty. How do they, therefore, they operate in 100 crores, 200 crores. There is an exemption from stamp duty, which is provided there in section five. And the, uh, the exemption will not be available if the acquisition is for a reason otherwise there for reconstruction of the company. And then uh, the measures of re asset reconstruction that is uh, talked about under section nine, the reconstruction companies have the ability to take over management. Uh, they, uh, uh, stressed asset, they're not managing it properly, then it is possible to, for them to take an assignment of the debt from a financial institution, a banker, and then they'll be entitled to, they'll be able to take over management of that. They'll be able to sell, they'll be able to lease or to reschedule loans. Whatever a financial institution can do as a principal lender, that the uh, asset reconstruction company will, will also be able to do that. They can take possession of the asset. Of course, there are some exceptions there. They're, they're taking possess, uh, possession. They, they, what is the level of interest which they must have? Uh, what uh, it, it can't be a minority interest. It could be more than 60%. There is some ex provision there which sets some limits. Uh, they also have other functions which, which are essential um, for its uh, active engagement. Is They act as agents for the bank. Uh, they can take possession of the assets and section 13.4. And they can act, a reconstruction company can take uh, uh, itself the position of an agent from a bank and take possession. It can act as a receiver, it can manage uh, things. So these are the other functions of the reconstruction company and uh, they are the ones which really engineer the recoveries. And uh, yeah, if the next slide for me. Is, is Sir, we have allowed you, you can do that. Yeah. Oh, I'm mean, not able to do it. Uh, allowed screen sharing. It has been allowed, sir. Yeah, it's been allowed. I'm not able to push it through. You got stuck there, Vikas. Uh, I'll have to go through some other. So we've allowed it. Just try that again. Not moving for me, though. I think I will go with the another instrument. It's okay if it's uh, not happening, uh, but I thought uh, it should come before I take over some uh, direct provisions relating to some decisions which have come about. Let's see, it's, uh, it's not working. I will just, uh, just cross check.
Yeah, I, I got it there. The enforcement of security, this is where I see an important activity for us. Are you there? Am I audible? Yes, to you? yes. yes sir, it's audible. Yeah. Uh, the, the enforcement of security, this is section 11. I said we are not using the provision much, and that's a major problem. Uh, section 11, please read this. I want you to know, I said also that we are, our engagement cannot be merely taking adjournments or taking time for making payments. There is so much else possible, I said. Section 11 is very important. It talks about section 11. Uh, it's, uh, it offers a scope for lawyers and mediators. The, it allows you to settle the DRT when the matter comes before them. It's possible for it to refer to that. Otherwise, a lender bank or a reconstruction company can itself resort to mediation. And what do we do at that time? If ever a problem comes to us of a borrower who is unable to pay, who comes to us? I already told you about what are all the activities for a reconstruction company. It can take take over management, it can sell, it can lease, it can reschedule. So in all that, if we, we need to find, uh, if somebody comes to us, don't immediately say, uh, sir, uh, I'm not able to pay now. Uh, I will pay, but there's no doubt it has become non-performing asset now. I'll pay, if I have one more year, I'll pay. Don't take merely responses from your client as saying, one more year, six more months. Try to go to the detail. We don't do that because we believe as lawyers, we have nothing else to do except knowing the provisions of law. We need to go a little more to find out this. We must find out. Please give to me the project report which you gave at the time when you were securing for a loan from the bank. What were your expectations at that time? Uh, what really went wrong? Why did it go for default? Uh, then uh, tell me now if you are saying in another six months you'll be able to pay. Tell us, uh, tell me how you'll be able to make the payment in six months' time. Where do you find the cash uh, come flow, cash flow happening to you? Where will you avail to yourself additional loan or funding in order that you make it worthwhile for you to produce and then be in a position to repay? Uh, our, tell me now if this is all not going to work. Shall we think about uh, your sale the asset? where we'll be able to find a buyer ourselves. Imagine the situation of a property coming for sale and it will not be possible at all for us to be securing the best price at that time. So help a person to find out it's not worthwhile. You should be in a position to help the person decide to even wind up. It will be a good time to wind up if you think you will not end up in more losses and you'll be able to secure uh, the cash out of sale. Uh, then how do you minimize losses? Uh, that, shall we continue the business with somebody else, uh, not merely by infusion of fresh capital, by human resources will be able to generate things. Those are the, or I don't know all that. Shall we look at somebody who will be able to finance, who will be able, who will be able to help us manage better? Shall we take a management consultant to find out what really has gone wrong? So we'll go into those aspects of what we have not done before. And that is what if you are a mediator, or merely a lawyer. These will be essential. If it's a mediator, we should be able to steer the conversation through. How will it happen? The question at some other time when I was talking about mediation to another group, perhaps, I was saying the settlement is never final without knowing how the settlement would work at the time when everything is going to be drafted. We just need to take a heave. Ah, now tell me, how is this going to work? That we must do. So uh, that's a very important area of activity for us, which the Sarpasi Act gives to us. And there is literally about 30 odd legislation now, the central legislation, which talks about settlement, which talks about mediation, which talks about other methods of resolution. So uh, believe uh, me, I've, even there, the DRT, the president is there, that you should be able to avail the services of mediators help them, prime them to see how they will approach. Our own bar, the DRT bar is there. They should fight, uh, try to secure additional skills of negotiation for a party. How do you negotiate with a banker? How, if it is a banker, if you are a counsel appearing for the banker, how do I assure to myself that the, assurance, the uh, undertaking which the borrower now gives to me is capable of being complied? How will I be able to 
secure better management consultation for that person. All those things must be our activity, either as a negotiator as for representing the party or as a mediator how to steer the conversations. Then the enforcement mechanisms of what section 13 says, I said there are three things. There must be an existing uh, interest, I said, there must be NPA. Then it talks about uh, notice giving 60 days payment time. And if any objection is taken, these are mere sections and therefore I will not detain you there. Something which is very important for me, which you should also, um, I would want you to know is uh, payment by a debtor shall be before sale, section 13, say, 38. Uh, and the right to protect a borrow, borrower, a company, uh, case of a company being wound up in such a situation, what should happen? Uh, section 13, 4, 13, 8, these uh, make references about uh, how a person makes an objection. You serve a notice on that person. And this is what some case law on the subject has been. And uh, the borrower says now, uh, doesn't give a notice or he gives some objection. He makes some objections and says, now this amount of what you're claiming is not correct. This, uh, some credits of what you should have given for the pay repayments, which have not done, you have not taken. There are several things which are taken. And uh, the section does not, section 13 does not contemplate any response of the creditor, the secured creditor to say, no, I've given you all your objections. We have a hand, uh, we have, considered your objections, we reject them, we put, put it for sale or we are going to take possession. Need not say any reason. If it rejects it, there is not even a provision for appeal there at the stage because there is a section which talks about. In Mardia Chemicals, if you'll remember, uh, Mardia Chemicals said that there must be some element of consideration by the secured creditor if an objection is given. And that consideration even if it may not be a reasoned one, uh, it ought to go into the mind of a secured creditor. Now, in a recent judgment of the Supreme Court, which you'll now see immediately, even that has been cast away. It, it has been diluted now in uh, ITC versus uh, Blue Shores. Uh, I'll show to you immediately the citation. And they said, now, uh, they've read down uh, Mardia Chemicals and said what was contemplated in Section 13 for a secured creditor must examine the objections given. Um, it doesn't say now the present uh, dispensation from the Supreme Court is, it may not be necessary. Now, what does the DRT do? So therefore, when, when it comes to an issue of sale, uh, what, what, what is the level of adjudication which you should make? This was again, initial phases were there. I'll, the, the decisions of the Supreme, Court, uh, the Supreme Court now recently will give you some idea about additional duties of DRT. It is just not merely an institution which sees now what is your statement, your evidence, and then an order after some time. How often do you ever find any case being dismissed from a financial institution? How often do you find DRT ever saying now that there is something seriously for adjudication? Never, not too many times. Uh, that is because that is the way the act is structured. The act does not allow you to take all, that, all kind of contentions. It contemplates uh, a quick disposal, a summary disposal. You don't need at all times a full-fledged full trial. For instance, in some DRTs, of what I know in, some, in Tamil Nadu, there is not even cross-examination. It's all assets and uh, affidavit and counter affidavit. That's all. You don't have a cross-examination ever. So therefore, various courts, various tribunals may adopt various procedures. You may not have all that ability to do things or what you can do elsewhere. Um, then taking possession, taking possession is probably the most important thing. Uh, how to take possession? That uh, comes uh, through some sections which are important and th 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 that we'll see through some decisions. Now, uh, police powers under section 14, I thought uh, requires some special emphasis. I'm seeing now it's uh, 12.20, I'll conclude in uh, 12.45. Uh, so, uh, we should complete the subject. Q and A can always be done because once the concept is clear, then the Q and A uh, one can I always look upon it. it now, uh, in no time, quickly. I'll in five minutes. I'll conclude uh, section fourteen because uh, these are the areas I thought we need to know some concepts. Fourteen uh, talks about the poll. This is what is the Supreme Court the recent judgment, which I'll say what it is. Where they say the powers. Imagine uh, that a secured creditor can take possession of the assets and if he is resisted, 
he can call the district magistrate or he can call the, the uh, if it is a metropolitan uh, city the uh, it's a chief metropolitan magistrate uh, assistance and you, you will look at things he has to see whether an affidavit must be given that there is a secured creditor there is a subsisting interest which is available there the amount has not been paid this is the amount which is necessary i want possession of the assets yes and possession given how is it to be given it can employ such force as it is necessary that's what it says and in itc versus blue coast this is the judgment which is said in 2018 15 sec 99 you must know uh, some parties are big some council are big i have at all times seen when a judgment i see i see uh, who is the party how big is the party who is the council who has appeared hari salve uh, appeared in this case and uh, it uh, this judgment is, uh, is about itc taking over assets from some paisa company in goa and uh, they were not making payment and they were obstructed at that time and whether the obstruction such uh, such obstruction is possible they they it makes a reference about because there were issues there after sale the the purchaser itc was seeking taking uh, the protection of the chief judicial magistrate for taking possession was only a security holder entitled to take possession or can even a purchaser take possession under section 14 was the question because there had been various views madras high court for instance had a view that uh, only if uh, the sale takes place the secured creditor uh, will still act as a trustee for a purchaser and uh, utilize section 14 that is what they said calcutta uh, judgment did not believe so it said now it is only a security uh, person who holds a security interest can take possession under section 14 so if a sale takes place you can't invoke section 14 and that is what bombay also had said now in this judgment in itc blue blue coast they said it is not so because he takes the definition of section 2f uh, 2z f and it says the amendment uh, before the, it it was deciding a case with reference to uh, the definition in 2f it doesn't talk about a security interest which is subsisting now it talks about an interest and therefore uh, it was uh, possible for a purchaser also to take possession that was uh, that was supreme court judgment but now the supreme court judgment was although recent of the year 2018 it was making reference to a provision which existed before 2016 now there is a change in the definition which is introduced section 17 class 4a uh, with 17 class 4a reads like this any person in an application under subsection 1 shall give an affidavit that affidavit must give among other thing class b it it must yes expired soon as it is determined an application under section 4a tenancy it talks about tenancy elsewhere under section 14 the borrower is yeah provides so this is a definition this change has come about in section uh, 14 1b in the year 2013 the itc blue coast does not deal with the proviso clause 2 uh, it says now the the affidavit must say the borrower has created security interest for various properties and that the bank or financial institution is holding a valid and subsisting security interest after a sale can you say that there is a subsisting interest so this is an area for um, that could still be doubted which could be contested therefore i thought i should tell the lawyers this is an area for activity for the lawyers it's your ingenuity for you to read down itc blue coast 2018 to say that it was a judgment which has uh, uh, con not considered a change which has come about in proviso to 141 in the year 2013 and then for tenant rights section uh, there is a 4a uh, which is introduced in the year 2016 that also alters a lot of things and uh, which we'll see where uh, it takes us because section 65a of the transfer of property act makes possible for you to um, make a rental arrangement it enables a mortgage or to make a rental arrangement therefore uh, if there is a tenancy which is created by the mortgage or after securing a, a debt for a, a loan which it is going to obtain the tenant will be able to resist possession that is the normal thing it should be because after all law allows for section 65a but uh, over a period of time the change in law has come about that in respect of agriculture tenancies because it does not surpass itself does not apply and therefore there's not a problem 
but with reference to buildings lease and rent control or rent control legislation which allows for protection against eviction notwithstanding any law to the contrary such as the transfer property act now some changes have happened those changes through the judgment there are four with these judgments i conclude i'll run through each one of them some decisions which you need to know uh, madia chemicals is important for us if, if you want to understand sarfasi please take this judgment 2004 four sec 311 young lawyer they must be able to read this judgment to understand the need is uh, it says uh, under section 134 this is what is said madia chemicals is read down in the subsequent judgment now in itc blue coast the need to give reasons for rejection of the borrower's objection to possession right of redemption is lost by action in section 134 the moment possession is taken then right of redemption is lost you don't have the facilities of what are possible there under order 34 rule 5 may not be uh, uh, possible now it is uh, preserved under section 138 17 is the nature of a suit this is important because the provision is under section 17 like an appeal it refers to an appeal after possession and things if it comes to drt drt can say uh, i am now looking at it as an appeal now whatever has not been done previously you can't do it is uh, the madia chemicals explains the action under section 17 which is in the nature of a suit under cpc that's what it says there was previously a provision there also uh, under 17 to that if somebody comes to drt for a challenge against the order of possession uh, against cjm declaring a possession or a secured creditor takes possession directly which was possible through means of an appeal it it was required to deposit 75% the court said it was not valid uh, section 34 of the sarfasi act the red down to allow for challenges for fraud and sales because uh, it's uh, section 34 says no civil suit is possible in reference no injunction is possible no stay is possible but then uh, madia chemicals reads it down uh, not possible not possible can still be possible if there is a fraudulent uh, uh, sale which has taken place the civil court jurisdiction will not be taken away that's what is madia chemicals such an objection is possible also under section 17 itself uh, obligation as to what sale uh, how which has taken place the possession of what has taken place uh, a, a non consideration of an important objection which he had given which uh, was rejected and then they took possession all that can be uh, uh, done there matthew burgis in uh, 2014 uh, this is uh, important for one uh, in, uh, for a reason that uh, validity of a sale auction process need for fresh notification because uh, i said there are like in criminal cases um, you have, in ndps uh, you have defenses very little defenses because the punishment is high the every technicality is uh, important because it is notorious fact that sales take place for grossly low values if you can show that the 30 days notice period was not there and if adjournment of sale had taken place and when a sale had taken place more than 30 days after that a fresh notification was not given is good reason uh, just as uh, khalifullah's judgment in 2014 5 scc 610 uh, makes reference to you to uh, help you understand how important are the rules the enforcement rules uh, under 8 and 9 how the punctilious observance is so relevant is what this judgment brings about and uh, state coercive action uh, visalakshi probably that's the latest law that was in 23rd december 2019 uh, indian bank versus visalakshi uh, it uh, did two things it, it one it said because some courts had taken there were different views uh, the different views where uh, where there is not a chief judicial with the metropolitan magistrate then it should be the district magistrate it can't be any other magistrate in places which are not metropolitan places now the courts have said it can be the chief judicial magistrate also so there although the expression is uh, the chief uh, metropolitan magistrate uh, slash district magistrate it could be cjm in places where there is no metropolitan magistrate that is what this uh, section says again um, there are the there are three ways of uh, taking possession how it should be done this judgment is again after section 14 provides so already read to you the proviso and uh, how possession uh, at that time an obstruction which is given there is a need for the drt if it ever comes to that for that to see whether objections have been properly taken was it properly considered was there something wrong 
all those matters can be considered now. Because it may seem like some judgments have gone in the way that everything is over, you're there, or DRT is there only to make it happen for them. There is uh, no fresh adjudicatory process every time. Uh, but rules of natural justice have to be read into every one of these things. And uh, that's why I think uh, it's relevant. And the court's discretion. Now, again, in ITC versus Blue Coast, um, ITC was able to secure everything in its favor. Uh, and uh, 226, if you bring a challenge at the 226 that the secured creditor or the purchaser didn't do anything properly, and they were testing the conduct of the debtor and said the 226 in the high court, how the debtor was uh, merely, because that was a case where um, objections had not been properly considered and uh, possession was taken. And he was saying, now, under notice, under sale took took place, and the fourth or fifth auction, the property was ultimately taken. There, uh, they were not seeing that there were some mishaps, there were some small technical glitches, there were not adequate notices and things. I said, now, what was this man trying to do? The borrower is conducted that uh, conduct had been at all times uh, engineered to take time. So what are we seeing now? His conduct had not been good, therefore discretion will not be given. That is how they looked at it and ITC therefore looked at it completely different. In Bajrang uh, Agarwal, um, this is for you to know, this has changed a lot of understanding of law relating to a tenant's right to object. Uh, Arshwad, uh, uh, Arshad Govardhan was affirmed and Vishal Las, uh, Lalsariya was uh, uh, partially um, not accepted. You need to know in Bajrang Agarwal, it is like this, uh, just state this. Uh, a tenant in possession of a property before the security interest, that's not a problem. You can at all times defend and say, My possession can't be taken from me. Actual possession, I will not give. It, it, it is not possible. Now, supposing a tenancy is created after the security interest, you'll have to examine it under Section 65E of the Transfer Property Act. Was it a bona fide transaction? Was the mortgage are making the loan uh, this uh, tenancy arrangement for adequate and appropriate reasons that six, uh, 65 years the transfer of property act is uh, fully com uh, complied with yes it is accepted he can resist position if it is after notice under section 13 uh, if uh, tenancy is created no uh, objection at all can be given he has to simply be thrown out no, you can't claim any benefit under the uh, rent control legislation but with reference to anything before possession and after creation of interest, the act, this uh, Bajrang Agarwal makes two distinctions. If it is a tenant at sufferance, so these are tenant at sufferance, tenant holding over, these are concepts from the Transfer Property Act. You will remember the rent control legislation provide for protection against eviction, notwithstanding any law to the contrary. Therefore, uh, a tenant holding over, a tenant sufferance, a tenant does not pay rent, all that is possible. But if he's a tenant at sufferance and he has not paid rent, it, it can be ejected and possession can be given, uh, notwithstanding the fact that the, mar the mortgage, the tenancy was for a valid reason. If he had been and if, uh, if he had not been paying rent, you don't need to wait till the rent controller orders eviction on the ground of willful default. It is possible for you to displace him here. And if he's a tenant holding over, mortgage has happened, he's a tenant holding over, he's paying the rent, then that objection will have to be seen. So therefore, um, if there are objections before the DRT under Section 17 as to what these objections are, can't merely be riding roughshod. I think Bajrang um, uh, Agarwal gives you in the last paragraph, what are the tenant's rights? So I'm sure mm, that will be examined. That is some area for you to act. I conclude now by saying that these judgments are not merely taken things of what are relevant. And tenancy rights, I thought at the time of uh, obstructing possession or the data to say that these are all amounts not correctly done, uh, this would require to be examined, particularly in the light of two important decisions, the authorized officer Indian Bank, probably is the magistrate, uh, chief, J, chief judicial magistrate uh, must be the party there, versus Visalakshi is one important judgment. Bajrang Agarwal, both of the year 2019 is important. And ITC versus Blue Coast, uh, whether it is valid in 
the light of some changes which have taken place with the introduction of what has come through in the year 2013 of uh, the proviso, which was not taken note of because it was not necessary for the court to look into it. These are views. There was one question which has been forwarded to me. Therefore, I'll answer the question to uh, what is not asked to me. You can, uh, uh, the, no more slides. You can take the slides and then uh, give the screen for me uh, because uh, I'll yes. take questions uh, of what have come. I'll take one question. I'll answer uh, what is to be done with goods which are not charged with bank. I, I, now look at this. When a possession is taken, he has to give the, goes to CJM, he has to give an affidavit, there is a security interest which is subsisting. So with reference to the asset, it must subsist. Without reference to it, if he is not taking the uh, permission or if he is not taking the assistance of the CJM and he is taking possession, if it is not with reference to an asset over which a security is created, question of taking possession does not arise at all. So therefore, it should be possible for uh, the person to come under Section 17 before the uh, DRT and say now it is wrongly taken, possession has uh, not been with reference to uh, property at all, therefore this is wrongly done. So therefore, but taken possession during Sarfasi proceeding along with possession of house as borrow is not available for service. That is not available for service, uh, he, the service was not done at all. These are surely objections which are possible in section 17 and uh, it's possible for you to be re-put in possession of property. So that is a question which was asked for which uh, not probably uh, that is Deepak Mehta because he had posted me. He is a law officer in PSP. Okay. So Mithi Jain, Section 17, where any dispute relating to securitization or reconstruction or non-payment of any amount due to including interest arising amongst any of the parties, namely the bank or the financial institution or asset reconstruction company or qualified buyer, such dispute shall be settled by conciliation or arbitration as provided under the Arbitration and Conciliation Act, as if the parties that disputes have consented in writing for the same. What is your take on that? No, uh, I, the, there is a, I've already explained to under Section 11 um, that it is possible for you to settle. What else, what is my take of, because uh, on a security uh, which is uh, to be enforced. I, I don't think I get that as a question uh, or is it merely a statement from the person who is saying? I, I, probably it goes more like a statement because next question by Sumiti is again like that. Mr. Ah. Sajdeva uh, has given his view. He says section 11 exists in part 2 of the Surface Act and it speaks of resolution of disputes between the bank and asset resolutions in relation to the inter disputes by way of arbitration and mediation. Does the process of arbitration slash mediation is not available to the borrowers and banks for their disputes. He I mean, has answered in that way. That's why. Yeah, that's correct. Uh, I would. Uh, I would not take a myopic view of things. For uh, uh, assets, it cannot be merely an issue relating to the uh, intercity uh, issue between uh, yeah, secure, uh, the bank uh, and the, the uh, asset reconstruction company. Section 11 has a problem. The security. The whole engineering of this act comes through an enforcement of security. Otherwise, what is there? An asset reconstruction company is also a company which is going to enforce the security. If there is a mediation which the, any provision talks about, it can be only in areas of conflict. What is the conflict which a bank which is going to experience through asset reconstruction company? It is going to assign it in favor of that. It is going to make possible some money realized from the uh, from the asset reconstruction company and then making over that asset or make, uh, uh, con constituting the asset reconstruction company as its agent. So therefore, I don't really see any type of a dispute between them. I would still think for any activity that results in ultimately a conflict, it can be only with reference to a person who has borrowed, who has availed of a loan, of a facility, who is, uh, whose assets have become NPA, that can give rise to some conflict. And that is how I would read section 11. So I'm sure it's available there for, that's why if it comes before the DIT, it is possible, even if it, is, if it does not, then it should be possible for the asset reconstruction company itself to invoke mediation. At the minimum, I would only expect now, 11 is not being used at all. Uh, we should at all times try to 
the DRT must use it, the lawyers to whom the case is interested must use it, must give a proposal to the other side. You will remember that mediation cannot be thrust on anyone. There cannot be a mandatory mediation other than the fact that some, legis some provisions like Commercial Courts Act require that before a person seeks for enforcement or seeks for a to be registered and a case taken, there must have been an attempt at mediation. That is what the act says. Now, this act or any other act does not talk about even civil procedure code. It merely contemplates through Afghans falling. The judge only said, now, before the issues are struck, please ensure whether the case gives itself fit for settlement. If it does, please put it through. It's a court's duty is what it says. But we don't even take that uh, hint at all. We should volunteer in every case. We should think that there is a problem which I have with the financial institution. I'm not able to pay. Let me wait and pay after six months or let me delay times till the property is sold. It's hopeless. We must try and secure something better for ourselves for the deal. And that is when you are a good counsel. I want you to be good counsel, make a meaning out of it. Because COVID is truly the situation which is going to generate a lot of stressed assets. There are going to be so many cases coming before DRT. And if all those cases must be only seen as somebody has not paid, put up the property for sale. He has taken possession, sale taken place, give, give confirmation. It doesn't work like that. I'm sure there are areas for a discussion like it never happened at any time in the past. That's how I would see Section 11 as being exceedingly relevant in these days after COVID. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, just for the participants, we have already a good number of questions on the uh, Zoom group chat. We will not be taking any other questions what, except what they are already. Let me see. Uh, so I will read. I'll read to myself from where, where it uh, goes. Uh, sir, can we please have, no. Uh, what is to be done in, if one-time proposal sent by a borrower is not accepted or rejected by bank? Uh, OTP is a manner of setting some kind of a negotiation, isn't it? Uh, if OTP is there, periodically, R Reserve Bank gives uh, various situations for OTP. Perhaps it will come through some proposal from direction because by then banks will not be able to accept a OTP. It's a, it's a smart decision. If a bank takes a decision to give it away to asset reconstruction company, if it is taking some money, it can give that kind of a benefit to the borrower also. It is possible to keep its own relation. Supposing 10 crore is outstanding, the bank is prepared to wind it up with some two crore received from asset reconstruction company and then create a securitization and then make it possible for the asset reconstruction company to do. That two crore can be recovered directly from the borrower, can it not? It all depends on your negotiating abilities and your ability to convince that your non-payment was on account of genuine reasons, that you are not a defaulter. That is how it is possible. I'm sure it is possible um, uh, is, uh, if they don't accept OTP, try and bargain for it. I'm sure it should still work. And then I'll just pick up at random because too many questions have run through. Uh, yes, I, I, I took from one. Uh, I'll, so you can tell me the name. I will, I will uh, hurriedly read that. Yeah. Um, I, I see Siddharth Shekhar says, uh, do the asset reconstruction company fall under the definition of a financial institution? It does not fall under a financial institution. Bank or a financial institution, that which lend or what it is. Under the Companies Act, I'm not too sure, Council, it will not. Because by themselves, they are not financial institutions. They are to be understood like that. In what context the Companies Act, if it makes a reference about reconstruction or something, probably it does. In what context you are referring to, I'm not too sure. I would like to believe that financial reconstruction companies are not financial institutions. They are different. Financial institutions are those institutions which lend monies. That's how you must see. Then um, uh, Rajat Malotra says, what are the remedies available to a guarantor whose property has been undertaken and sold by bank? But at the same time, bank failed to proceed against the property of the original borrower beyond taking orders from BRT. It's all old decision, uh, Rajat, uh, from um, Justice Chagla, that the right of a secured creditor to enforce against any one of the persons is available, either against the principal debtor or against the guarantor. 
that it should proceed against uh, the principal debtor. If only there is a failure, you go to guarantor, is never an accepted position in law. It's uh, the liability is coextensive. The fundamentals of the contract act is the liability of a guarantor is coextensive, and therefore it is possible for them to enforce like that. This is perhaps again a negotiating principle. You can take the borrower with the, the secured creditor if there is a guarantor. He can go to the bank, and then negotiate with the bank. And now look, my asset is this. This is not going to fetch you immediate money. This man is sitting on gold. That person, the principal debtor's money will be it's possible. Shall we do that? If there is a person coming to you as a lawyer, as a lawyer, you try and negotiate with the bank. Don't immediately think a defense or go to the court saying that I'm only uh, your guarantor. I'm not a principal debtor. They, they against the principal data. It's a completely wrong defense because that just does not make it possible. There is a well-known case law. So I don't think that will help Rajat. And uh, that is in fact, SBA versus MPEX 91 Supreme Court, which said that the liability is joint and co-extensive, then followed by Justice Singh's judgment, which says yeah. that liability is joint and co-extensive. Right. So uh, a short question by the thing, does the COVID-19 extend the period of 60 days uh, of the notice under section 13.2. That is by Bhatesh. Bhatesh Thakur. Um, the, see, I would understand it like this. Uh, this notification of what the Supreme Court says talks about the institution of suits. Uh, I can't think of uh, this 30-day this notice is getting extended. It is not like that. It is to be for, for any action, for an institution of a suit, that provision uh, arises, that uh, Supreme Court uh, enables you to have an extended period. But anything else, I don't think the Supreme Court notification is applicable at all. So therefore, if there is a 60-day notice which is to be given, the 60-day period is over. Can they take the next step now to possession? Perhaps now that is a, a, an area which you'll be able to say that uh, you have given 60 days, you're taking possession. You should, this, uh, this period, you don't do that, is when you can probably come, come somewhere and then take some benefit. It can come probably in an action before the DRT to say it is not possible. So uh, this is unfair. Put it there. My objection has not been taken. You place an objection because as the law says, uh, there is really nothing for an adjudication. Even an objection need not be seen and taken in section 13.4. That is what is ITC now says. There is nothing which is necessary. It will go. You will have only a right to contend before uh, the DRT and the section 17. That's what it would say. I would think not that this extended the extension of the period will be available to notices and things. It is only to institution of suits and appeals uh, of uh, of proceedings before institutions where the period of limitation will be extended. Otherwise, not. That is my view. You, I would like to take this as a, a, a point for a contention because it's not open and shut. I would take a decision. Uh, do we not see another court reverses it? Doesn't mean the first one is wrong. It's another way of looking at it. Therefore, I would want you to push for that boundary, expand the frontier, make it possible. Yeah. Uh, you pick up whatever question which you think. Uh, uh, sir, we will just take three questions because we will be running out of time. Akhilesh, we ask, what is to be done if the OTS uh, sent by the borrower is not accepted or rejected by the bank? It's uh, a simple thing, isn't it? OTS is not accepted, then the next step is, will, will take place. You have under Section 13, whatever is the uh, procedure which is laid down, they will take they will take that. So therefore, there is really nothing. We should make it work. The OTS, if it is not accepted, it is only because we don't give sufficient justification, nor do we make possible for a banker or financial institution to realize that you are very serious about it. Many people think OTS is a manner of extending time, and there is no genuineness. You must realize that OTS will not be possible for them unless it comes within the norms which the Reserve Bank of India prescribes. Otherwise, I already told you as to several situations where NPS themselves accumulate only because of relaxation of norms. And OTS schemes are invariably things which are promoted and which are approved by the Reserve Bank. So therefore, they will not adopt anything which is not there. If OTS must be accepted, it, should, it is a matter on a proper negotiated principle. And, uh, that is what I would say. You won't have anything. You won't be able to go to court to stop it. You won't be able to go to DRT and stop that if they're taking action. My OTS has not been accepted. It's purely a bargaining point, which you will know. It's not something adjudicatory at all.
the my personal take is that after sadar associates the uh, rbi guidelines also still say that they are non discretionary and non discriminatory so if the case of the particular person falls within the ots floated by the bank and the rbi it has to be accepted in any case on that point they can always challenge it so therefore within the that point i'm saying within the, this is again the sadar associates i think it went from uh, punjab uh, our court yes, so therefore so probably it, it was from your judgment only which uh, while you were holding the single bench correct correct and then bharadwaj has say in case of consortium lending the account with the lead bank is running fine but it goes to npa with one member bank that member bank uh, wants to sell the property under sarfasi which is mortgaged with the the lead bank uh, in case of successful sale how would the lead bank handle the account because it will be unsecured after sale of mortgage property yeah uh, any uh, there is a, it's a, it's an uh, it's a principle which is under the transfer property act uh, the sub mortgagee now what right that he has there is a prior mortgage which is already there uh, while a sub subsequent puny mortgage must always be added the prior mortgage need not be prior mortgagee need not be added as all party for his interest is never lost so therefore the if it's a consortium of a lender of a another bank which is a subsequent to mortgagee then no matter they take action or purchase the prior mortgage which existed will not be lost at all so i am not too sure about what you're saying the mortgage is lost the security is lost no it will not be lost if it is a subsequent mortgage and the prior mortgage existed and it will not be lost a prior mortgagee will not lose uh, his interest Uh, merely because a subsequent mortgage uh, has been put up for sale, mortgage you put it up for sale. If I have understood the question correctly, uh, so okay. otherwise the prior mortgage he loses nothing. Sanjay Krishnan, can an insurance company approach the DRT for recovery of money under the subrogation? Insurance company, where does it come? Insurance company, where, where is the question of the insurance company making claim under Sarpasi? Because Sarpasi can be invoked only by a financial institution. or an agent such as a reconstruction company no one else will be able to come the latest judgment which was pandurang uh, the supreme court has considered this is the judgment of a five member uh, bench i think uh, justice arun kumar has uh, uh, written the judgment which was pronounced on 25 that is how many days back a few days back 25 or have we not come to 25 at all today is 14 5 is probably i'm making a mistake with some 10 5 10 24 probably uh, where he has said cooperative banks are also um, financial institutions i don't see therefore a insurance company approaching uh, dr uh, dr t or uh, uh, sir invoking uh, sir fasi it's not possible so mr ip singh uh, we just welcomed you and the president of the bar he writes that he had the honors to conduct the case of the sardar associates aha uh -huh. very good so uh, the so last question we will take uh, can ots be extended if defaulter agrees to pay with interest any judgment can it be extended no you say it's all there possible there under the ots if it is possible it is possible otherwise it is not possible i think uh, it is uh, it, it is not purely see that is what is important ots is not something which is a charity by the bank uh, it these are statutory uh, they they have their regulatory in the sense that the reserve bank of india makes possible certain things it examines the financial market it examines the condition the industrial situation the stress assets and then allows for ots to be extended in a particular way if it there is a default there it is lost if they don't accept it is lost the acceptance is not in accordance with the particular scheme which has been given by the directors of the reserve bank of india you still have an issue otherwise you have not so the uh, though we had said last question but this question i found it interesting ashish gupta says there is a flat where flat is given in the security and the building has got uh, undergone redevelopment or the bank could sell that property ah this is always uh, there under the mortgage also if a secured interest supposing i demolish uh, a secured interest and then put up a, a palace say no you can't reach the palace will you be able to say any person this is the uh, uh, the security is available you can't now do anything which can abnegate a security or uh, do something which can create a problem to the person therefore you will take it to such improved state as it is possible it is there and available there you have the answers there in the transfer property act itself as to the improvement the effect of those improvements 
you will take uh, take possession of all those improvements and you won't be able to compel the person to pay for the value of the improvements he takes subject to all the improvements therefore okay. your improvements do not fetter the right of a mortgagee to secure that interest also so so uh, we will not take any other questions because we invariably don't go beyond 1 hour 30 minutes so like we have experienced as a lawyer lawyer while making submissions before you and otherwise also how to make grasp on all so subjects along with the judgments what is your take that the lawyer should do or the professionals or the students should learn from you how do you actually inculcate this habit and how do you come out with all this case law etc like as a lawyer we feel that the associates are not working in the right perspective we look we are looking at you upon you as a role model that individually you are looking uh, into all this uh, because i am humbled by what you are saying but i'll tell you something for a long time i have pleaded along with lawyers that our facilities like the judicial academies must be thrown open to lawyers on a full base on a continuous basis the training cannot be merely for judges the nation demands as they say as a music channel says it expects the empowerment to come must come to lawyers our judicial academies must be open for lawyers uh, and we should be able to bargain with the, our chief justices and with our courts to make those facilities available for us for only should the enlightened judiciary can be only through an enlightened bar i can tell you every one of the finest judgments if i have ever written it was an account of fine assistance rendered to me through a lawyer so therefore now i am seeing like i have never done unfortunately for us the bar councils um, meaning no disrespect to the high office holders uh, they have not necessarily gone to persons who are leaders of the bar Uh, i i see already a person who is a bar council member here and his father who had been <laughs> that he is participating they could i would want the bar council to take this now what has happened across india during covid is not the judges how many judges you think have come to the forum to speak how many uh, present judges only retired judges are some courts i know in madras high court several of the judges are participating actively in all these webinars now the initiative has gone from lawyers and what is important and you have done it, or what has not happened all along you have already begun this state of learning i see now today sina saragun from madurai sends to me 23 lectures of what have gone through this month in this month and last month after this court lockdown is it has happened 23 lectures is no small thing at all 23 days and like that what uh, probably vikas and sapan and other friends are doing from chandigarh is you have started the education program for years and, and that is what and what what did how did i make it it's only this i had some little problems of my inability to sleep and therefore i could sublimate my inabilities to other things but even otherwise uh, i had an interest my father at, he died at 93 years and uh, He, after i came in practice after some 3 4 years i stopped practice but till he died you take up uh, you'll come to my uh, chamber you'll pick up uh, the latest journal you'll sit uh, read and then tell me during uh, dinner time or lunch time now how is the judgment correct or how is it not right discuss with your friends periodically critically examine every judgment if i'm saying itc is not correct i would want you to probably not say that in court this judgment i'm citing is not correct it's not the way we should discuss create this atmosphere where there is an occasion coming you should be able to put the front front here that kind of an interest active interest you have already started don't let this momentum go down anyway you have already begun and so your words are well taken in fact as we, uh, as you were pinpointing sir yesterday we had justice madan uh, madan b lokur and justice uh, uh, s molidhar on our platform and we had taken this point that the lectures and all these materials which are given to the judicial academy that should be at least be made available on the youtube etc that point was well taken and we are quite uh, quite sacrosanct that at least we will be having the videos just like we have uploaded our videos on our channel on uh, beyond law clc so another point we just wanted like uh, while you were just informing us a point well taken that you were 
having less sleep, but you utilize it for the purposes of better education. And same is in our case. During the lockdown, we thought that one way was just watching TVs or chatting on the Zoom, etc. with our friends. Another way was to latch upon the opportunity and create something. And we are quite happy. Like yesterday, we had an audience and participants. That is on the platform itself, 990. Though we are also going live as on today, also on the Facebook. So what is your take to the young lawyers? Do you feel that, uh, and students, that Securitization Act would itself be a good platform by solely relying upon this field to develop their professional practice in this? Certainly, it's possible because I expect now there is a boom of litigation under Sarfasi and before DRT. Mr. I.P. Singh will be suddenly seeing a lot of cases on his board and we should help him. Uh, sort of things. And I would expect also Mr. I.P. Singh to be looking at lawyers' assistance to see how um, reconstruction of debts, rescheduling of debts, uh, all that is done uh, in a way which is possible only to be properly steered through a person who is the president of that association. Young lawyers will be able to see, and this they must take as an occasion to understand a whole system of banking. Just don't go there. Like I said, there is so much to understand. If you are looking for expressions of uh, the financial markets of what exists, extraordinary. Um, this, go through these sections one after another. You'll find that there are so many areas which we have never known. Beyond uh, understanding a security as that which is created through a mortgage, we don't understand other things. How is the whole system of securitization operate? How do these reconstruction companies work? All that are interesting areas and that they read, they uh, associate themselves. For a young lawyer, it offers a great opportunity to expand. Probably you'll be looking for a financial market, stock, stocks uh, making profit. It expands a horizon in way which other branch of law perhaps does not. So therefore, I would not want anyone to be a specialist to be a young lawyer. Uh, I, I wouldn't want him to be completely associated himself only with Sarfasi and say, my work in DRT and that's all. That's wrong. As a young lawyer, you must have his interest in CPC, IPC, uh, 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 the securitization and everything else. At some point of time, you can uh, specialize. Uh, but then there's a lot of activity which will happen in, uh, in this uh, area. And I'm sure uh, young lawyers can learn a lot and do a lot of work. It's a point well taken and sometimes during my career of 25 years, I've also seen that there is a drastic change in the act and you suddenly find, just like when the DRT Act came in 1993, the lawyers who were practicing on the civil side and were the bank lawyers basically or defending on the borrower side, they just were flowed down because uh, the entire proceedings had shifted to the DRT. So, and thank you for all the insights. And before I ask formally, from uh, Shikha Dhiman, a prof assistant professor in UILS Punjab University, who are partners in our uh, webinars, propose a vote of thanks. Just informing the participants that tomorrow we have Honorable Mr. Justice A.K. Sikri, former judge, Supreme Court of India, to uh, give us his insights on proportionality, balancing the scales of justice. He will tell us how this doctrine of proportionality will be utilized for the purposes of criminal law, civil law, and service law. Do stay connected. Do stay connected on the Facebook and Instagram page or on the WhatsApp group for the latest updates. Over to you, Shikha Daman, uh, on behalf of ULS to propose a vote of thanks to Justice Kanan. And Justice Kanan, it was a wonderful session. Uh, th thank you for all the insightful and we are all enamored by the way you expressed it. And you just had us woven all across for this one and a half hour. We didn't even realize that the time is over. Thank you, sir. Over to Shikha. Thank you so much, Vikas, sir. A very good afternoon to one and all present here. It's my privilege and honor to propose a vote of thanks and acknowledge the contribution made by Justice Kanan on today's webinar. Uh, on behalf of Beyond Law CLC and University Institute of Legal Studies, Punjab University, Chandigarh, first of all, I would extend my uh, most sincere thanks to Almighty for making this webinar happen in such a situation when our country is facing a crisis. Now, I would extend my heartiest thanks to uh, Honorable Mr. Justice Kanan, who has been kind enough to share up his academic as well as practical knowledge and spare his valuable time with us. Sir, uh, today we had an opportunity to hear your thoughts on security enforcement under Sarfasi Act, which have actually enlightened our minds. 
your lordship have been uh, beautifully tailoring his entire lecture for the audience by articulating upon the historical perspective of the act analysis of its different provisions and concepts its judicial approach as well thereby making us very very crystal clear about the complex and tedious issues of the sarfasi act so you are uh, your well structured uh, lecture justifies your immense knowledge on the topic and at least for me it has cleared so many points we'll be looking forward for such more lectures sometime from you sir thanks a lot i am immensely thankful to mr vikas chatrat also for his efforts towards anchoring today's session also we have been fortunate enough to backed by a team of very proactive and dedicated members for conducting this webinar and lastly of course my sincere thanks to all the participants for maintaining decorum and making themselves a part of this interactive session Once again, I thank you all for your kind attention. Stay safe. Stay take care. Over thank to you, Vikas sir. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Stay blessed and stay stay safe. Thank you, everyone.